Should we see how good KJ is at editing and just talk a load of gibberish and just random sentences and see how he put, puts it all together? <laughs> just read the alphabet and a few key words and uh, yeah. <laughs> mix yeah, it well, to however you like. That depends yeah. on what you want me to make you <laughs> make you say. <laughs> Welcome to episode 46 of the Number One Crude Mistakes podcast with Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and Hover from Behind the Mistakes. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> this is the intro then. Welcome, guys! It's been a long hot day, I don't really don't mind. <laughs> no, me neither. My brain is fried. Yeah, mine too. So this what? is going to be a talking fun about, one. <laughs> talking about fried, I bought a fire extinguisher today. With the sole purpose of I'm going to empty it tomorrow. I'm just going to find a way of doing it. I mean, you can just empty it out in the backyard, but... I mean, you I, should be do, start a fire and have a fire drill with the kids to show them how it's done. You then know, you got some content as well. Now, that that's... Yeah. I'm not going to make content of that. But yeah, I'm actually going to give them that. I'm going to put a fire out... Yeah, You're not going to make cool. content out of it. Yeah, but I don't want to film my kids and we're going to make a laugh out of it and then someone is going to be like, it's dangerous and what you did there is... Uh... Yeah, no. Nope. That's just interaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you have oh, to... Yeah, true. <laughs> are you just going to give them a fire extinguisher and, hey, put out the fire or are you going to show them first how it's done? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it, it's more fun to just give them a fire extinguisher and put yeah, out and the I fire. Have, I have a timer... And then, of course, uh, you can see how far or how long it takes before they figure it out. And I mean, the, it it's stated on the side with relative simple hieroglyphs how you should do it. So, I mean, a, a four-year-old and a six-year-old should figure it out. I mean, if if not, it's not good enough. Dress them up as in full fireman regalia <sighs> and then build a mini house, set that you on know, fire and let them put it out so it looks like it's all in scale. Oh, <laughs> And repaint that uh, that food truck you built for them. <laughs> yes, I know the organ. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, because then you can uh, you can play it while it's burning, and then of course I don't know how to play it very well, so the kids could come like, we need to put it down that and just put it out of its misery. <laughs> the title can be "I Set Fire to My Organ." <laughs> it's a win-win. Yeah, and you have a four-year-old coming in with a can of gas. <laughs> but I do like the the miniature house because I found the stack uh, in the shed of materials that I, I need to discard. So I just told the kids we should build a small house for the cat, and then they can and set fire <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a cat inside. No one knows. No one knows. <laughs> the only thing, though. Let me Cost, some sound cost, effects. Costumes for kids. The price on that. Yeah. It's insane. And it is the crappiest quality you can get. So I'm guessing yep. two helmets and a jacket, that's the minimum you could like get away with, and that would be in the hundreds of pounds. Yeah. Better off to doing it something in cardboard or something for them. Which yeah. would be fun if it's Something Start nice burning. and flammable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Polyester, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the, the kids' uh, uh, masquerade clothes are heavily polyester, so they would not do well in an actual fire. So cardboard is probably better. <laughs> yeah, most likely. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's cool. I'm going to make a bonfire. In my yard tomorrow, I'm going to let the kids uh, empty it. That's going to be awesome. Thank you. That's brilliant. <laughs> is it powder? Yeah. And I did, I was at the hardware store yesterday and I found the two liter one at a reasonable price. I mean, they are a more expensive used. And then, no, no, I'm not getting this one. And then I went to another hardware store with the kids today to look for something else and then they had the smaller one liter ones at an even cheaper price and like this is a sign so yoink just brought it with me and uh 
I did think today, should I empty it in a bucket of water or should I just take a garbage bag? But how, how fast will it inflate it before I have to deflate it again and then start emptying it? Can I empty it upside down? Will it then just release the gas without the powder? But now I have the perfect fit. If you're struggling, you know, I found if you just empty it in your vehicle, it's okay, not much powder comes out. You should just do that. <laughs> yeah, you just have to let it sit for 15 years first. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not how it works. should be fine. <laughs> so you're making two strumsticks. Uh, <laughs> well, I could have, uh, but no, uh, someone's already covered that niche, so... Uh, <laughs> It's the, uh, it's my super soaker, super, super soaker, uh, water gun, pistol cannon. Catchy title. <laughs> yeah, I need to work a bit on that, but. Uh, <laughs> Too many PSI super soaker. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a, that's a plan. I'm not sure how fast it will go. I need to the measure the threads on the top there because if I can get away not welding to the body then it would be preferable but i also want a cap to uh, fill water on the top so there there might be some welding involved and then i have to up my welding game and i do need to pressure test it with water and so on so that i don't uh, blow my face off trying to use it for the first time just have a micro hole in it and make a water jet out of it <laughs> just that yeah. cuts your head off that would be, yeah. Oh, that is nice. also, oh, um, a friend of mine, he's a mechanic, and he he welded on a hydraulic cylinder. And, of course, once he'd done that, um, he was reaching his hand in to feel for leaks. And, of course, he did that while this was pressurized, and there was a pinhole crack in the weld. So he actually shot hydraulic fluid through his skin and in his finger. So when he drew it out again, it was like five times the size with hydraulic oil. And he got extremely lucky. I mean, he was rushed to the hospital and they they cut the skin of his finger open and, and flushed it and everything. And that he did not lose that finger and get all sorts of poisoning. That's... Uh, so he learned something that day, and uh, he hasn't done it since. Uh, <laughs> neither has any one of us. <laughs> who, uh, uh, does he get well, the apprentice to check for him now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always. That's why so that's hydraulics why scare me. To... <laughs> yeah. That's why the apprentice I, I didn't is called realize, Johnny Three but... Fingers. <laughs> I didn't realize, but I got a lot of welding jobs after that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, talking about fire extinguishers, you, you had uh, an encounter with fire extinguisher this week, Glenn. Do you mind telling us what you've been up to? I made a strum stick out of the fire stick, and I am so what? happy with it. Go on. I what? got a deja vu. You made a what? <laughs> a, str a strum stick for a change. What's that? <laughs> it's a little three-stringed instrument. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you ventured away from the foreskin ones. That's that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I was um, looking at the fire extinguisher and thinking that's about the same size as a strumstick body. So I don't think anybody's ever made a strumstick out of a fire extinguisher before. So, you know, that's, that's the direction I took it in. I've, I've only seen this. pictures and it looks good. Um, it looks fantastic. I'm so happy with it. But How is it to play it with that big cavity in it? I mean, it. Steve came around. I rang Steve yesterday morning and said, Can you come around and play it? He came around yes, last night, well, late afternoon, and gave it a whirl. And normally when I make an instrument, there's a little bit of fine tuning. And I have to alter the distance between the bridge and the height of the bridge and a few little tweaks. All he did was tune it and just cracked on with playing it. And he said it was the. I'd made it better than any of the other ones. Mm, so you're improving. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> See, when you do something more than once. 
But that got me thinking, though. If you didn't cut it in half, but you just cut a sound hole, could you make an acoustic one? But uh, given the size, there wouldn't be much resonance there. But yeah. you could, you could put in a like a mic for good measure to get some sound out of it. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, the uh, when you strum it, the uh, the body actually you can feel it vibrating, so it does it does do something. It yeah. sounds fantastic. I mean, I, I know I put a reel of it out yesterday, but my mics weren't working, so that's just phone sound. Hmm. So it didn't pick up the greatest sound quality of it, but I, I thought it sounded fantastic. But of course, we're, we're going to see a video about this, so there is no point in just asking for details. But what will you do with the other half? Miniature grill? I'm not sure yet. I was thinking some sort of insect. Fruit I'd bowl? Like, I'd like to make something... Um, automated uh, automaton type thing at some point. Hmm. So maybe an insect body or something that might that might end up as that's what's in my head at the moment. Yeah, but that who knows? Pretty cool. At some point, I want to make that myself, but I feel that's a rabbit hole. You, if you fall into that one, you might never come back up again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does it still work as a blunt force uh, weapon? Or is the neck stick. too, or is the neck too fragile for that? No, the the neck is solid oak. It's it could, <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, you could definitely batter somebody to death with it. <laughs> and if the neck snaps, it's going to be nice and sharp, isn't it? At that point, so ah yeah, Win-win. it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, doing a finale at a concert with it, it would take, it would probably mash up all the other things rather than break itself. Definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, but I, like I say, I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with how it looks. Having done the sculpture thing and that being a bit crap, and I think I failed at the um, the dovetail joints before that. It was nice to have a little win. Yeah, so I'm quite excited about this one, and I hope the video will do all right. I just had an idea. Um, I have an old guitar who is useless. Um. And I had an idea involving a bagpipe, but, well, uh, given Cage's input here at a concert when you're doing the finale number, people throw their guitars in the air or they smash them. I have the ingredients of rocket fuel. And I've seen some bands use pyrotechnics, so maybe I could build the body out of solid rocket fuel <laughs> and then you just play a song while you light it and then you see how far you get but not very far I would say <laughs> no and it burns around 2000 degrees at the most depending on how you so it, it gets hot very fast so <laughs> you might not uh, it needs to be a speed solo <laughs> so... <laughs> when you started this conversation my mind went a different route and I was thinking you'd strap a couple of fire extinguishers filled with the rocket fuel to the guitar see how far you could shoot it into the sky yeah that's also um it's it's just a matter of time isn't it i mean if i build that super soaker i mean you can fill it up with anything and once or twice a year at my mother's cabin we make a a great big bonfire down by the sea and uh (coughs) Of course, filling it up with petrol and standing uh, five, six meters away and uh, see how well it works as a flamethrower. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's going to happen, I guess. Some sort of non-return valve. Well, you, you, you just press until it's empty. <laughs> ah, <okay. Yeah. laughs> Fair enough. One way to do it. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Could you put enough pressure in it? With the petrol, where it, it missed the petrol out, as opposed to just squirting it out. Isn't that uh, for the, just to put the right nozzle on it? Yeah. And that's the thing, though. Um, as we talked of, of last week, the, um, the windshield fluid viper flamethrower, I mean, it, I could easily take the um, the valve for that project and put that at the end of the barrel for the the super soaker and then it will but then again that's it will produce a mist but then it will just make a fireball very close to you and it gets very hot (laughs) so you you would (laughs) like to have that stream uh, actually to blow out a few meters before the fire happens 
But then again, I mean, it's trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> maybe get yourself that fire suit first. Yes, that's yeah, maybe a good I should idea. get um a fireman's outfit. I always wanted one of those jackets. They they look badass. Um, what else looks badass? I I got um I now have a chef's apron, a chef's jacket that fits because I got <laughs> a new one. So tomorrow I'm gonna film the the whisk off <laughs> with the kitchen aids because the <laughs> the weather is nice. Uh, all my lights are charging. I'm charging the camera. I, I need to charge my phone. I'm just making sure that everything is ready today because, of course, I'm home with the kids, so I need to put on a show or something uh, on the <laughs> telly for half an hour, and then I have to run out and uh, do some uh, filming that I'm going to edit <laughs> later in the evening. So. Are you not doing it in the kitchen? No, it's, this is an uh, this is an outdoor kitchen kind of event. <laughs> the fire alarm going off in the middle of it. Yeah, I've done. Well, there, there, yeah, of, of course, the the exhaust would uh, stink up the place. But one of my first projects I ever did was I built my own speakers at the age of uh, I was fifteen, I think. And I built them out of 22 millimeter MVF, doubled up. So the, the, like huge, heavy speakers and it was done properly. And for the electronics and um, the high filter, low filter parts, my father helped <clears> me obviously, but uh, all the sanding and so on, I did myself, but nobody told me how fine a dust you get <laughs> when you're sanding this, uh, uh, I don't know what it's called in English. The 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 thing you put on uh, to fill all the crevices and so on, and then you sand it back oh, down. Oh, the filler. Yeah. The filler. <laughs> so I I bought this fine filler and I filled it in, and of course, this was uh, I think it was late in the year, so it was cold to do it outside, and we just had an open <laughs> carport. So I did this inside our living room. And of course, <laughs> when you're standing there and there is no direct sunlight, of course, you, you do sanding by hand and you see all the <laughs> dust fall to the floor. So I sanded and sanded and sanded. And then I took the vacuum cleaner and I just vacuum cleaned up around where I'd done. And, and my mother came home. Oh, if looks could kill. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I was May. I mean, she needed to help, but we did cleaning of the entire house and of course when she pointed it out to me there there was this nice fine white powder dust layer on everything i mean on the on the bright side of course we we got to do a deep clean of the house but yeah that got everywhere so <laughs> that's why i'm not standing inside anymore <laughs> <laughs> not even in the workshop <laughs> not even in the workshop and you wonder how much of that you still have in your lungs to this day Probably half of it. <laughs> <laughs> so KJ, despite going on holiday this week, you managed to get a video out. Yes, yes, I did. Uh, because I mean, the day after last uh, week's recording, uh, I finished the edit more or less, and then it was off to off to Gothenburg on a holiday uh, for five nights. So I just came home uh, like four hours ago. Uh, from now when we're recording, so I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit out of it, and yeah, it feels like uh, ages ago I made that video. Uh, <laughs> partly because it was ages ago since I actually filmed it, but yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> editing and publishing it. Uh, so yeah, it feels good to have it out in the world. The tufting uh, video of the podcast logo. This was really hard to to come up with a name for it that would actually <laughs> make sense, but yeah. <laughs> Well, I, for one, thought that was such a lovely video. That seven minutes passed so quickly. So, you know, I think, you know, when you watch a good film, an hour and a half, two hour film, if it goes quickly, you know, it was a good film. And that's how your oh, yeah. your video went. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. You, made, uh, you made quite a repetitive process look really interesting. So, yeah. you know, I was quite impressed by it. It's really easy to use a time lapse in that sense to make it 
<laughs> I mean, because it, it's kind of magic and it's fun in the way that you don't see what happens because you're standing on the back of it yeah. and just hoping that it looks good on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> you have to go and check at times and feel it and see how I, it goes. I did during the video uh, think to myself because the our logo is an AI render of a hand sketch I did just real quick at the beginning because we needed a logo and yeah a robot looking like a microphone and holding a lot of tools so I just sketched it up very quickly and then all right I was going to try this uh, AI thing and of course it's become a lot better so I thought all right we're getting close to a year now so maybe that's the milestone for upgrading the um, the logo and then when I saw your video uh, we could maybe make it uh, less detailed and more tufting friendly because <laughs> <laughs> looking at all those details and like, all right, it's too run with that color. And then <laughs> yeah, I, I had to from. simplify it quite a lot to actually uh, make it work. Uh, but yeah. I think it, it came out rather good. But yeah, we we could. Uh, I mean, we, we could have a new logo every year and just have one of us do uh, <laughs> some kind of physical version of it. I don't know who who of you are for the next one. Uh, I'm I'm happy to do any of them. I've got a laser. <laughs> <laughs> Not getting the raw files. <laughs> <laughs> all I need is a picture. It's all good. <laughs> no, but it, it was fun. Uh, started out as a solid ten out of ten video because it's not interesting apparently, and I don't um, blame people who who's not in on. In on the joke, no, uh, in on the thing. And at the moment, let's see. It's a five out of ten now, so it's not that bad. Yeah. With ninety three views, so yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, I I would never click on a tufting video, but you know, if if any of the listeners haven't seen it, I'd urge you to watch it because it's it is just a really nice video. So, and it is only seven minutes. You have the time. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect length of art. <laughs> I'm gonna make a tufting video. It's gonna be a <laughs> In real twenty time. hour live. Yeah, no, I'm not. But yeah, tufting seems really cool. But I think I might just take a course because I really want to buy the gun, and then of course I would make maybe one or two rugs, and then it would be just sitting, gathering dust. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Make the gun. <laughs> All right, I need that lathe first, uh, and probably a lot yes. of other metal yeah. fabricating tools. But yeah, sure, give me a yeah. year or two. <laughs> I mean, it's not that complicated, but you're, it's really it's a lot of fine tuning. If, yeah. because... if, if a lathe's all you need, maybe I'll just make one out of wood. Yeah, <laughs> you do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I just need one to copy. <laughs> <laughs> Need to buy one first and then yeah. take it into parts and then measure everything and, and do it in CAD. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that would be cool. Um. <laughs> Talking of lathes, my lathe paid for itself this week. Mm. It did? It did, yeah. Yeah. I uh, made a mistake on the strumstick, drilled a hole in the wrong place, and I needed an 8 mil oak dowel to plug that uh, hole. So I turned myself one. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> well worth getting a lathe for that, I think. <laughs> I'm... That's really nice because uh, uh, on the metal lathe, I really like like brass dowels in oak and so yeah. on. So yeah, it's, it's going to pay for itself instantly then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might need to get a, a foundry as well and, and to... Uh, recast all those metal shavings that you take off the brass to actually reuse it. It's going to make because a wig. I... Oh, you could also that's... do that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. I, I, I saw it might have been itchy. <laughs> Go stand out in a lightning storm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, of course, given my complexity, I, I would have to do it out of brass, of course. <laughs> it would suit you. Copper oh. would work. <laughs> I saw this maker. She she makes wigs f 
for cosplay. And it was now a eight month minimum waiting time to get one done. And they cost up to around $4,000 a pop. And then it's like, that's amazing. But then again, she's doing amazing work and she really puts in the hours. So of course, uh, but yeah, it's really cool that someone can live of something that specific. I think I would go mm. insane making wigs because that really looks tedious. So what are you thinking? You can make a living from making brass wigs? Oh, might be a very niche within a very niche, but I don't know if you, ju you just I need one or two <laughs> clients <laughs> with enough money. <laughs> you have to create that market first, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but talking about clients, I'm, um, I'm thinking of making another table. Um, and uh, a friend of mine want, wanted a table made uh, a while back ago, and we, we played some ideas back and forth, and now I do have basically all the tools and the training to pull it off the way I want to pull it off. So, uh, What kind of table are my, we talking about? It's a small coffee table in yeah. oak. Uh, I also uh, wanted some leather work in it. And of course, it's on brass dowels. Uh, of course, I need uh, just an excuse to get a lathe, basically. Um, but uh, yeah, um, we have the design, and, and she wanted a table based on a, a famous sculptor, artist, painting. So it has a very distinctive shape. And of course, that is easy to make the um, CNC just hammer out and then. Uh, of course, it's going to be a bit bigger than my CNC, so I have to make it in two parts, glue it together, and then do all the rounds over by hand, and then, of course, fit all the the legs and whatnot. But I... Do you want me to turn you some farmhouse legs for it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be brilliant. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I found the design that uh, is a bit more squarish, so I can actually make the the legs as well relatively easy. But uh, this is going to be a proper woodworking project with a bit of a stake. But there might be the, the first woodworking paid project I ever do. So that's going to be fun. Nice. nice. And were you going to charge properly for it, or is it just materials? It's going to be just materials. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good friend, so... Uh, do you have a deadline for it? Luckily, no. Um, <laughs> Luckily, <for her. laughs> so that is also a, a bad thing. Um, and she knew you well, you said? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, no. Um, well, she uh, she just moved, now have a new apartment where it fits in. Uh, she's going for the 70s look. It's, uh, it's very much an aesthetic I like, so uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And... Uh, yeah, need to set a deadline, but it would be nice to be able to deliver it before Christmas. Uh, and of course, being the master procrastinator, it's uh, well, <laughs> if, I, if I push it, I might make it a Christmas present. And that sounds reasonable. Talking about procrastination, do you know when you're making something and it's going well, either one of you or both of you? And it's going well. Yes, yeah, sometimes that happens. Yeah, okay. So you, you complete a process and you think, oh, that, that, that's fantastic. And then you have to start the next process. And you know full well that that can completely fuck a project up. And then you complete that one and it's still going well. Do you procrastinate between those stages? Because I do, like, hell. Yeah, because it's between different phases, but on the same project. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 that is. Uh, that's a proper pain when you're making something and you do the first thing and it sometimes it well <laughs> kind of often it it gets better than you thought and like this yeah. turned out much better than i thought and then now i'm gonna make the next part which i need to fit into this and then it's like oh and of course you really think through the next step then so yeah it, it's usually a good thing um but I've, I've learned to lower my shoulders a bit. I mean, if I fuck up, then it is something that is handcrafted. So I can fix it. It might 
be a, a design feature or something, but I mean, it just gives it character. So uh, unless I totally fuck up with uh, like the CNC where it just ground big dimples in the, the top plate, I mean, that there's not a recovering from that except using uh, using epoxy. But then again, there's no recovering mentally after that using <laughs> epoxy on a table. So. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, uh, it's just, I, I think I've probably had it on about three or four projects now, and it's uh, it really just slows things down. Not thinking yeah. about the steps. Do yeah, you... but I feel I've, I've always been afraid of messing up, undoing the job I've already done. Yeah. So, yeah, that's I think that's why I will never be a good painter. Uh, as in, I mean, doing art, arty things. Right. Because when you see someone doing a painting, they they make something and it look, I mean it looks fine, and then they start messing with it and turn it into excellent. And yeah. I would be so scared to mess up that fine painting, <laughs> yeah. so I wouldn't dare <laughs> do I it. Mean, it's okay to mess up where you just have to fix it, but the worst thing is when you ruin something. And you have to start from scratch again. Yeah. Yeah. Because then I really struggle to find the motivation to just start all over again. At least if you spent f quite a few hours doing the work. Uh, and when it comes to painting, it's. I've done a lot of painting with like an aerosol spray. And it's like. You put on just enough layers of clear coat and you have a little bit left. And I'm, it looks good now, but I just do one more for good measure and then it starts <laughs> to drip. And it's like, yeah. God <laughs> damn it. And then, of course, you think, all right, I'll, I'll just leave it and I'll sand it back. And then, but that's a lot of sanding. So what if I just take a Q-tip and I just poke at it? And like, <laughs> oh, God damn it, you ruined it. And you have a lot more work to do. And... I painted a guitar at one point and I really ruined it. So I just let it cure and I went back with a heat gun and just blasted the paint until it curled and I just scraped it off, sanded everything back again. And then I thought, all right, I don't want to screw up because the paint costs me a fair bit of change. So I went to a friend of mine uh, who was a professional painter and owned a paint booth. And of course, we set up and he helped me mix and so on. And I used his equipment. And of course, I, I did the same fault. I mean, I was just going to do the last bit. And then, of course, it started dripping. And he just came. No, no, no. That's no problem. Just this is automotive paint. So when it cures, it's solid. So you just sand it back. Start with 400 and work your way up to 1200. And then you just buff it out. And then you polish it. And it is a mirror shine finish. <laughs> And that was an epiphany because I didn't think you could do that. I thought you needed a, res a reasonably good shine and then polish it up. And he's like, no, no, no. I mean, if, if it starts to drip, just wait and then just put on layers because that you can easily sand off. And if you get like this uh, orange peel texture, no problem. You might mess up and get that, but then you just make, sure that you put on enough layers that you have enough to sand back and you can make anything shine and of course when he showed me i mean it sanded it back and it was dull gray and i was like thinking there's nothing saving this of course you might put new clear coat on and then try to save some of it and he's like no 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 you don't need that there's more than enough clear coat on here and then it just started rubbing down and going through the layers and so on. And it got to a real good mirror shine. And of course he did it on the edge and then he just gave it to me. Now you do the rest. Of course it is a painfully <laughs> long process, but I mean, learning yeah. that it saved me a lot of work because you don't have to like bring it back to bare wood and prep it again for painting. So. Yeah, that's something I'm really bad at. I think I should, I should really, take a course in that or something, just working with layers and grits and all that to, to get a good finish because I'm too impatient and and cheap. <laughs> it's yeah, amazing that's... how how quickly you can polish metal as well just by going through the grits and 
you know, for the instance, the fire extinguisher, I mean, I started out on 60 because I was impatient trying to get some of the bigger bits of paint off it. So I started on 60, great, went to 180 and then did 320 and then put it on the polishing wheel and there were no fine scratches to be seen at all after no. such a simple process. It's just, it's just, it is bloody amazing how quickly you can get up to that shiny finish. And that's, of course, uh, that's when you buy one of those... Uh relatively expensive uh, sanding the belt sanders at the uh, Rossman Lewin cells uh, where you have two meter long yeah. bands that, that don't really wear down that fast and you can just swap them out by just pulling a handle because it's very easy to polish anything metal basically but uh, yeah it's a bit big to have in my small workshop and yeah you're gonna need one though aren't you now you're a metal guy yeah, but they, they have this small miniature one at AliExpress. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> or, like the one I have, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Or you can uh, you can build it yourself. I mean, when I have a lathe, I can make all the parts and uh, bearings and wheels oh, yeah. and so on. Then you just need an electric motor. But the cost of the parts and the time, you would probably be better off <laughs> just buying one. But I mean, it's not content, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> And then, of course, uh, I go to every open forge day that uh, <laughs> Rasmus has with a with a caliper, and just measuring. <laughs> 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 what are you doing? Oh, nothing, nothing. All right, fifty millimeter. <laughs> noting that down. And what do you think the tolerances are on this? Can you? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sneakily taking a lot of photos. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Hovard's a real pervert. He's got a real thing for my grinder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been coming over for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Videoing it, measuring it. What the hell? <laughs> so when's the lathe in coming then? Well, um, not sure yet. I haven't, uh, I haven't decided on the model yet, and uh, yeah, I got the feature creeps. So <laughs> it might be more expensive. Um, I did do a, a bit more thorough clean of the workshop today. I uh, got rid of some uh, material, um, found some new storage. I now know where I can actually put a lathe. So, uh, yeah, I need to do some measuring. I also need to do some other measuring because I need some more storage and I have some space under the counter there. I was thinking about buying one of those tool carts, but they are either too tall or they're filled with tools I already have. So I'll just pay for a lot of <laughs> doubling of tools I'm not going to use. Um, and the empty ones the cheap ones they are really crappy quality so yeah. i have come to the conclusion that i need to build one myself um and it's it's not going to be cheaper i was looking into material and uh, drawer slides and whatever but i'm gonna make one that is custom to me and that will fit into that slot so when it's not in use I can just push it in and it will be a natural extension of the, the wall of drawers that I have uh, and I also then might put a dent into my uh, stored material so it's a win-win so um, that's going to be a project fairly soon I think so it's going to so, be out of wood or metal um, it's going to be of plywood, um, and of course, it's. I've been playing with the idea: is is it cool to have like a metal exoskeleton with the plywood body and drawers inside? Because I do have a welder now, so I, yes. I just need an excuse to do welding. And then I've been looking into a design, and of course, there is a lot of tool cards out there, and I know the setup I want of drawers and so on so it's uh should be really easy but it's going to be boring I mean making the the body should be relatively easy and fun but repetitively making 14 drawers just cutting up those sides and making the boxes and oh, 
don't really look forward to that. <laughs> That'll be pretty quick, though, won't it? We have yeah, a robot for that. Be. I mean, if I, if I did... Uh... Well, that actually takes too long. I mean, if you use the table saw and just cut the strips... Yeah. It's relatively fast, but I mean, you need to plan it out so that you don't have to cut and then, all right, I need to pull the table out again because I should cut four more of that one. So, and that's the one thing I don't like. I, I'm not the type who plan out and draw too detailed uh, and make a cut list, but to do this efficiently, I sh should actually go down that route and have a complete cut list before I build. But then I have to know how it's going to look before it's done, because I usually uh, design as you go. That's my <laughs> design mantra. And, uh, I, yeah. But here you have a, a fixed space it has to go into. So, I mean, you can't deviate too much from that. Otherwise, it won't fit or it will be have too much gaps, so you won't be pleased with it. Yeah, so it's it's basically the drawers configuration. And of course, when I pull it out, I want the top to be a work surface. Um, so of course, it should be replaceable. Um, and then I want at least one large drawer on top, but they don't need to be that deep. Um, and then, of course, it's figuring out how wide and how deep do my drawers want to be and of course what kind of tools do i want there because i i really wanted to get a tool cart to have all the spanners and all the mechanical like when you're working with your car and i wanted some beefy because we have a gravel driveway so i wanted beefy tires on it so i can just pull it out and just bring all my tools with me um if i make it bigger should i then also put some other tools in it that is also woodworking related but or should i segregate those two i'm, I'm not sure so there, there is some thinking to be done before i can start uh, making decisions yeah it's tricky doing anything in the workshop and planning anything out isn't it because um and it, it's just planning it's tricky doing anything for the workshop that you you hope would last forever yeah <laughs> Nothing and of does. course no now I build a welding table and I've started to now I actually have my two angle grinders. I just moved them out of my Bosch stack and just put them there because I only use them for metal work. So they're, they're going to get their space there. So I've started now splitting the tools in where they're located. Um, and I think for metal work, I'm not using the angle grinders for uh, woodworking, so it, it's relatively easy to put them there. But of course, the uh, take the the jigsaw, <clears throat> you can easily use that for sheet metal goods as well. So I mean, I do have tools that I use for both, but doesn't make it too heavy with all the tools in it. Because that's, and that's the mistake I I do over and over again load up something with tools and then it weighs like 200 kilos and I can't move it <laughs> even though it's in casters. Yeah, I um <laughs> it's it might not be a segue but it's a detour. I actually um subscribed to uh, a gym today. <laughs> and uh <laughs> I've joked with the fact that it's because um, I can't basically lift that welding table. Um, I built it on top of the other table and I just lifted one end and no. And then I just had to have my wife help me to get it off that table. And of course, on wheels, it's okay. Uh, and, I, and I want to build shelves and move tools in it. And I've realized that the wheels are maybe a bit far back because, as you say, when you start loading it with tools, it gets really heavy. Um, but of course, I made, a, I just tack welded the front legs. So I think I will have casters there as well. Um, but that won't work in my gravel driveway. So I have to be able to just drag it on the large rear wheels. So then I need to balance it. And I like, 
All right, but I can fix that with uh, making a concrete counterweight on the backside. But of course, be <laughs> because of the arm, that weight going to be substantial and it's going to always oh, going to be a mastodon. So, yeah, no, maybe not. I'm thinking motorizing it. So you can drive it around instead. That would be yeah. cool, but then it should be <laughs> then it should be on tracks, huh? That would yes, be awesome. Yes, definitely. Yeah, a just get an old snow. <laughs> a motorized barbecue on tracks. I like it. <laughs> yeah, just get an old snowblower and and put those tracks on it. Picture this: everyone's <laughs> at a picnic in a park by a lake or something, and then. You just come strolling along with your bear and behind you, you have a, a grill on tracks just following you everywhere you go because you have a, a tracking device in your <laughs> pocket the, or something. So just with the, the barbecue powered, tank. <laughs> with your petrol powered uh, mixer on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And uh, a petrol powered uh, refrigerator or something like, I mean, you just yeah. uh, run the compressor off a petrol engine. <laughs> you scare off people at the beach to see the smoke on the horizon and hear the <laughs> hear the sound of the motor oh, oh, no, the smoker coming <laughs> on the range of outdoor kitchenware <laughs> yeah the mad max edition <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh well that's so brilliant um that added two years to that project <laughs> at least but then again it it might just be a, a completely new project because i need that welding cart and welding table to to make that so uh, i mean it's on brand for you to do a mark two II, mark three and so on oh yes um just like i do with drumsticks <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> of course being home alone with the kids today we um we pulled out the atv and just let it rip up and down the street here, uh, making sure that all the neighbors are awake from their <laughs> midday <laughs> nap. But uh, I now found the, um, how can I put it without telling what I'm actually planning? Well, it's, well, I have an ATV and then I have a separate body and I want to do a merger. Let's say that. And uh, I found someone selling that other component, so I might pick that up tomorrow or the day after. We'll see. No, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Give us a hint. Uh, it's, uh, no, it's okay. Far farm equipment. <laughs> 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 so that's nice. a, that's a, And that's a project I'm really looking forward to working on, and I don't think it will take too much time famous last words of course um and then again today when <laughs> we went to the hardware store and got that uh, i was gonna say flamethrower <laughs> fire extinguisher <laughs> <laughs> i also got uh, a compost bin that is for non-maker related things and then i got some opal white acrylic glass because I'm planning now on um, putting that behind the Hellcorder logo and installing the LED lights that I have oh, so that's nice. uh, that's also going to happen but I am now lining up five to six projects that I have all the materials and now plan to do and some of them are summer related projects so there is uh, I, I need to actually make a, a plan for what i do when because doing five or six in parallel while filming and uh, no that's uh that's a bit much yeah yeah you might pull it off but not me no not five I mean, three is probably the top it's five now, but before Christmas, there'll be at least another seven on top of that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's a there's a Halloween costume thrown here at some point for Homer as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't forget the table. Yeah. Um, and then I might. I got a I got like a, a pedal blank, like a volume pedal for the hell quarter, and it has a. On top of the pedal, it's, it's like a rubber inlay, uh, but it's loose because uh, you, you should glue it on yourself. But I was really into just tracing it and then just 
make one in plywood or something with the Hellcorder logo. That would be awesome. And of course, I do have an engraving bit for for the CNC, but it it's like it's it's a V bit, so that the carving is always a V groove. But maybe I should just draw it up and. I now know several people with a laser, so uh, I might get someone to just hammer it out. I was originally thinking about uh, you, uh, Glenn, but I have people closer as well owning a laser, so I might not burden you with work. You've got, you've got other friends. <laughs> well, we were your only friends. Well, <laughs> friends. I mean, with I've, I've seen them on the internet. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> I've liked some of their posts. I mean, <laughs> I don't mind who you ask to do it, Hovar. If you want me to do it, give me a shout. I'll happily get one posted over to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's my first thought. But uh, I mean, depending on how much you have to do, and uh, but oh, sorry, I'll just get Shell to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll just talk to Shell directly yeah. then. Yeah. Uh, she would love to make you something, I'm sure. Could you send this with Glenn in his <laughs> luggage? <laughs> <laughs> you might want it before October. I mean, when is it now? Soon August, September? Yeah. No, the August is not. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen before then. Oh, okay. No problem, then. <laughs> I'll carve you one. <laughs> on the lathe <laughs> but that's the brilliant thing I've never thought about that I can just start outsourcing parts that will save me a lot of time in the yeah. workshop yeah. and people like uh, you want to do a collaboration and <laughs> makers are always oh, oh no. collaboration <laughs> yes exposure and, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just getting parts <laughs> <laughs> You're just farming out those smaller channels. <laughs> Instead of a bot farm, a YouTube maker farm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of bots, I, I saw a video um, the other day of Kyle Hill about the dead internet theory. That the internet is more and more being filled out with bots. Like, what was it? 56% of all web page traffic was was non-human. Wow. Uh, so that internet is slowly destroying itself with AI and bots and people are more or less, real people are hiding in their own little uh, Discord or WhatsApp groups and that it sort is... of thing just to, uh, just to get away from the bots. That video is actually on my uh, now to watch list. I've started adding videos there again. <laughs> and um, I have seen another video saying the same because there is a lot of people using bots to make content because you just set up a lot of channels pushing a lot of crap and then it just generates views and revenue for, for something. And then, of course, it turns out that now also, as you said, 50 to 60% of the traffic and the followers and the comments are actually... Uh, companies training AI going in there. So it's basically AI generated content, which generates comments and likes from AI. So it's, it's basically no humans involved. And then I saw on another documentary, they, they just showed the old nineties internet, like a map. And then of course, all the information was there and Google's role was to systemize this. So when you search for something, then you could find the most relevant thing, but it's not being the index server anymore. I mean, now the two or three first pages on Google is just ads for someone who pays <laughs> to optimize their pages to get there. So it's not yeah. the thing you're searching for. And of course, on that map, they started seeing that people are now going to more specific places. I mean, Facebook is one, uh, of course, the TikTok and Instagram, but that is basically the social media where people just 
go to piss off. But then you have the GitHub, the forums, and these are like closed bubbles where the search engines can't come in, but you also don't get the pollution of AI and so on. So it's like they're now calling the, the internet as we know it today as the wasteland because it is the the place in between all those bubbles where people actually are and creating real content and a lot of people and i think is um uh, the tech tip channel the linus or something like if i want answer to something i just go to specific forums or use specific apps because you can write it into uh, Google, but you don't get results anymore. So, yeah, a lot of documentaries now are surrounding that, that the internet is broken and that AI is just accelerating that at a very rapid pace. Yeah, I feel like in the future it might be that you need someone to verify that yeah this is a real person i've actually met them i can verify that glenn is an actual real person making content <laughs> i'm still not sure but <laughs> <laughs> he might be three kids in a trench coat who knows but it's really, yeah. it's really in real three life fat kids in a trench coat <laughs> <laughs> you said that not me yep <laughs> <laughs> And on we're that talking about disturbing image. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you were talking about forums, and KJ mentioned WhatsApp groups. So um, we had a, a little discussion between ourselves about maybe setting up a WhatsApp group for the CMOs. So you're thinking we should make our own bubble in the the big wasteland that now is the internet? Yes. Think of it as a breathing space, um, a campfire in the wasteland. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, you've lost me. <laughs> <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't pitch an idea and then just say, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought we were talking about uh, WhatsApp groups and then we're talking about fires in wastelands and things like that. That's where you lost me. <laughs> but this sounds very much like a topic for the half pint. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't it? Could Fires, do. wasteland, yeah. <laughs> groups, get-togethers. Yeah, all right. Let's, uh, let's save it for the half pint then. Yeah, then maybe we can get all the listeners of this episode to actually listen to the half pint because so far I don't think we have managed that. Oh, well, interesting fact before we sign off. So the reels I do for Instagram for each episode, the half pint one is viewed much more than the main episode reel. Just a little fact for you. But still, mm -hmm. it, the half pint get, gets about five to ten less downloads than the main episode. Yeah. So it's probably bots. Probably. Probably. And I mean, it's their loss. Yeah. But, but if you are a bot listening, I'm fine with that. I'm yeah. all for the robots doing whatever they want. They don't even have to listen as long as they download. <laughs> no. I mean, subscribers are subscribers. And, and, uh, any like we love is you all. a good like. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have a good one, and uh, we'll catch you all in the half pint. Bye. See you later. Bye. <laughs>